Well, first off, a big welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, I hope we can uh, enlighten you, if not entertain you. Uh, I don't make a lot of videos really, really often. And it occurred to me that I've never done one that actually just walks around my fuser and shows what's going on. Back there in that big round, dark whole sidearm is our main fuser grid. In the foreground, on a feed-through sticking in from the right, is our ion source grid. If I get out here far enough, you might be able to see one of my Faraday probes. I don't know. Over on the left there is a quarter-wave antenna for two and a quarter gigahertz, or a Faraday probe, depending. I have a nice stick I can wiggle from outside the vacuum, which is kind of crummy right now, 2.2 times e to the minus seventh thousandth of an atmosphere since the lights are on and baking out all the impurities. So let's just back off and look what we got here. I'm going to turn this light off because it's nighttime and that's 500 watts of heat. This guy is my control panel, lets me turn pumps on and off, stuff like that. The red tank is where the fuel, which is deuterium, heavy hydrogen, comes from. Uh, this is a control box for two valves. Uh, the one on the right lets gas in through this pipe. And a valve that's in there under the lead because we have to sort of kind of keep the x-rays down. And the one on the left lets gas out of the system through a valve I'll show you later. Now what's sitting back in the um, that side arm is a grid that looks like one of these. Uh, it's actually a hybrid of these two. These are um, couple I've made in the past. Um, down here the box with all the cables going to it is our data acquisition computer um, that then feeds a bog normal PC that runs Linux. Uh, the guy there with the two slots on the bottom is a audio amplifier that lets us hear uh, clicks from a couple of our neutron detectors. Um, you can throw the stuff on the PC here in real time or up here on this big screen on the other side of the shop. I did get a request from uh, Mike to uh, linger a little bit more on the stuff. So we will try to do a little of that as we go along. Right now I have that two and a half gigahertz antenna hooked up to, guess what, a magnetron. That turned out to be a failed experiment. Uh, frequency just all wrong for this. This big white piece of PVC pipe has a helium-3 uh, neutron detector tube in it. It is what we listen to on the left channel. Um, you can see this whole thing is coated with lead, except for the stainless steel is so thick it's good enough. Under here we have a, uh, the red thing is a mass spectrometer. Um, the thing behind it is a 512 liter per second turbo pump, or turbo drag pump. The four-line plumbing is all this uh, coily pipe stuff and valves and whatnot. And what we do during the run is close that big hand valve and use this solenoid valve right there to decide whether or not we hook the four pump up, which is sitting there continuously running when we when we are, uh, to the turbo pump and let a little gas out. The rest of this is just mostly trash. <laughs> Where it starts to get interesting is what I'm doing now. Uh, a lot of people say, we just made a Farnsworth fuser star in a jar. Well, yeah, and uh, all Elon Musk does in SpaceX is make fire, too, right? Except yours just lays there and his gets you to space. So we're doing it a little bit differently here. It's a high-voltage feed-through. We've spent literally years getting to the point where it'll pretty much take anything we can throw at it. And the big brown thing in back is a ballast resistor to protect our, our nice power supply and the fuser itself from high current arcs from stray capacity and capacity in the power supply. What we've just added here is an RF transformer so we can force particle recirculation, you know, to happen on purpose instead of by accident. This big metal tank with all the junk sitting on it is a 100 kilovolt power supply we built uh, recently and haven't put into service yet because I haven't added all the safety stuff for it. Now all that stuff coming out of the feed through and this wire coming in the end is our current uh, power source uh, is normally inside of this thing which is a big old uh, piece of PVC pipe with screen on it and that just keeps RFI out of everything. So this is all really the center conductor of a fairly fancy piece of coax. Um, 
This guy here is our neutron oven. We put a sample uh, in there and then set that here. Let me pull back a little bit, which is that side arm the main grid runs in. The data we actually log is from this thing, which used to be a civil defense detector, uh, which has completely changed internals. It's a Horniak detector that only detects fast neutrons, so I got a Horniak button and a photomultiplier in it. This other guy here is the uh, shielded feed through for our um, secondary ion grid. And here's a couple of Spellman power supplies, one of which is for the ion source. Here's the big baby, a couple of kilowatts at up to 50 kilovolts. That's our main power. Uh, we also have some gas tanks down here. These are just things like argon and nitrogen that we use to flood the tank with when we want to bring it up to atmospheric pressure so we don't get dirty wet shop air in it. And um, Okay, Mike, we're going to linger. You know how to hit pause. So you brought me a nice big tank of argon. There's a lathe where we make some of this stuff. Uh, but, you know, I basically have a more or less full machine shop here, even a table saw, every hand tool known to man. And you might laugh at the uh, reading glasses and uh, microscopes and what else not, but wait till your eyes get old, okay? <laughs> you won't laugh anymore. Um, and, of course, I live in the usual creative chaos pile of pew. I'm not sure what else to call it. Uh, we have parts down here to make other big power supplies should we decide we need them and we want to take the risk of the x-rays. Um, and just too many toys to mention. One of the things we've been using this 2.5 gigahertz 4 channel scope for is to measure the transit times of particles so that we can derive this thing um, with RF or even better yet make it oscillate since between the two grids we've noticed we have about a power gain of 100. Um, at frequencies that will help drive the ions through the focus of the grids. And that's really important. Uh, most people who make fusers just make their grids with a random wire orientation. You'll notice here that uh, we're using cylindrical grids and the orientation is very much not random. They're cylindrical electrostatic lenses. And anything that is electrodes with a high field on it in, um, is an electrostatic lens, and the question is, did you make a good one or not? And most spherical uh, fuser grids, or our little ion source grid here, suck as lenses. Um, whereas these are pretty good, but they're not even up to optical standards, and so where we really need to get is uh, better than that, more like electron microscope standards. So, I'll leave you with this. And uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I will be making more videos when I have something worth reporting. I have a feeling the popularity of some of what I do is because I don't talk too much and I only report when I have something to report. See you later.